to shorten that again. Right. Good afternoon, Stephen. Uh, good afternoon, John, and welcome everybody to Inspired by NVIDIA with myself and John. This is week four. And we'd like to say thank you, John, wouldn't we, to the people who've been watching? Yeah, it's been great. Um, last week's has now hit the 400 views mark, which is fantastic. It is. Well, from I'm the really, start. really chuffed about that. Yeah. And we're going from strength to strength. The, the first week was just the two of us. Then we had two of us with videos. Then we had somebody else's videos. And this week, we have some great videos and a guest. So we're looking forward to meeting our guest in a moment. If you've any questions about NVIDIA, then you can actually post them in the comments today and we'll take a look at them and try and answer them. And for the first time ever, you'll notice that we've got a logo, top right-hand corner, we are in videoed. So uh, we're, well, we're grateful to NVIDIA, aren't we? Yes, they've given us uh, the permission to use the logo and uh, hopefully that uh, we're going to continue to work together to achieve some things so that everybody else can be inspired by in video totally i thought um, came from stephen by the way sorry stephen by the way uh, i right. never thought anything as clever as inspired by in video just trips off the tongue right it's about time that we actually welcomed our guests now we're going to say that kevin is a good friend of both john and i and um, we've known him for over 14 years now, um, and he's still younger than we are. So welcome to the show. Uh, and I'll put our names up so everybody can recognize us. Kevin, hello, Kevin. Hi. You can tell Kevin's younger than us. See, look, he doesn't have any white beard. Yes? Has he really been 14 it. years? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wow 2005 2006 yeah uh time has flown it has yeah i think we met the missus first but uh yeah, yeah. it's a long but, time since the arrows have been around yeah indeed you had your you had your um delivery business in those days didn't you that's right, right. yeah and then things changed could you tell us a little bit about your background kevin uh, so my background's quite interesting, and it's not typical of, I suppose, most people. Um, I left employment, as in the last time I was actually employed by anyone in 2002, where I managed a large facilities company, um, so office refurbs and all of that. And basically, I, I had a disagreement with the boss and decided to set up on my own and set up a, bu a building company, which most people are completely unaware of, um, and ran that for two years uh, successfully and sold it on uh, it was a very good business and then went off and created a transport business because transport was the hot thing um, there was lots of lovely things happening it was very uh, unique type of transport so it was dedicated transport around the UK and Europe and that worked really well I ran that for a good number of years um, that must have been eight nine years and then decided that's it I'm done um, Want to move on to the next thing and throughout the course of the transport business we've been learning how the online world which was developing uh, would work for uh, small businesses uh, because it gave us a uh, way of connecting that traditionally it would have been through uh, newspaper ads that type of advertising radio ads which the bigger the budget the more reach you got which was the way that it was which is why all the big boys dominated everywhere and everything but the online world gave us an opportunity that put us on a level playing field at that point that we could connect with on the same level as the big companies so we really started to explore that and won some amazing contracts through creating content blogging was our preferred method sarah became um, a very renowned uh, business blogger through this um, and then in 2012, we sold the transport business off and we now combined run the Online Visibility Academy, which is our overarching company, um, and train people to get visible, get business, get sales, and connect with the right types of people online, in a nutshell. You better tell people who Sarah is, 
Sweet, Sarah's mate. My, my partner in life and in business. Um, and she came from a corporate background. She went on to maternity leave and got a nice payout uh, for redundancy at the end and said, right, I'm bored now. What can I do? And I said, here's my transport business. Come, in, come into it and do some stuff. <laughs> and lo and behold, she had no clue what the small business world was like at all. Um, but very quickly, she learned, loved it and really levitated towards the marketing side of it. So she got involved in that, built Birds on the Blog, which was a renowned brand, still going. Uh, we passed that on to someone a couple of years ago um, with uh, massive reach. Forbes recognized millions of viewers a, a year on that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's Sarah, my partner. So she's the blogging genius, if you like, um, which I'm fortunate to have in our business. Can't hear you, Stephen. No, I can't hear you, Stephen. It's okay. That was that was me. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're both the brains behind the Thursday Blogging Challenge. Yes. Which has been going since forever. It's been going 11 years now, and it's still wow. going. Every year it gets a refresh because yeah. every year online stuff changes slightly, um, and it's just gone through a refresh. Uh, but it's still going. We've had hundreds of thousands of people through that challenge. It's uh, quite astonishing, really. And we sell it for a whole one pound. <laughs> well, that, that, that gives commitment, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It's, it's not about the pound because you ain't ever going to get rich off that. But what it does is any form of transaction that you make, psychologically, people make that commitment to follow through with what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, and that was the point of doing that. Right. Now, the reason, well, it's great to have you, but one of the reasons for joining us today is that you were kind enough to send us some of your videos that you created yep. using NVIDIA. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring... I haven't got titles on these, so just a minute. I'll bring the video up on screen, and we'll see that in a moment. Then what I'm going to do, uh, take this stage by stage, is I'm going to switch my camera off, John's camera off. He knows what's going to happen. Put it to picture in picture, uh, that way around, and take your name off, and... The other thing we have to do, best not forget, is adjust the volume so we don't blast people away. And um, press play. Got some cool music on it. All right. very effective and so is that did, sorry, sorry. John, over to you. i was going to ask is that for your own business yes that's that's content nitro is a sub brand of ours so this is very much content focused but the leads to sales is our uh, new training that's being launched in november it's in pre-launch right now mm -hmm. uh, so it's just getting people to understand a little bit of what's going to be coming on that program you know, and I think it's it was just meant to give a clear, concise. Well, it's about putting human beings together and making some form of transaction. You know, having a sales connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long did it take you to create that using um, the video? The hardest thing for me on that was finding the right images. Um, mm -hmm. I tried my very best to use only in video images. Okay. Um, because we've got quite an extensive library outside of that. But I thought I wanted for the purposes of what we're doing in this to sort of just use what was available in InVideo. Um, I found the music a bit of a struggle as well, to be perfectly truthful. Um, but I think that's growing as as the days go by, all that stuff's growing. So it, it probably took me, it's a template that's in there. So the template mm -hmm. I didn't really change. Um, the arrows were an added bonus. Um, obviously because of the, yeah. the the name and all of that stuff but um it took me probably 20 minutes to do that yeah. your your thoughts john 
and questions? Well, uh, I agree that finding the right images and music is the thing. Um, and I have started finding those before I even attempt to do a, a video now. So I have in mind what I want from the video and I'll do all the searching first to get the different things and then go into the mode of of uh, deciding which template to use because you can influence by what happens in the video can have a, uh, decide whether you want a square, a letterbox or an upright and whereabouts things go on the square, the upper, the letterbox and the upright. So yeah, I think that is probably takes more time than actually creating the video in many, many cases. Yeah, it's, it's the planning, isn't it, Kevin? You've got a concept in mind and you, you've got to plan it out first before you go to NVIDIA. Well, the, the thing is, with, yeah. from a marketing perspective, the music invokes emotion, mm -hmm. right? And marketing is all about emotion, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. you can have uh, music that builds to like a, a, a peak. So it builds uh, excitement as it goes along. You can have music that creates apathy. Um, you know, in, in, in this type of promo video, you want one that sort of builds a bit of excitement, but not too much where they're jumping around for joy. You want them to sort of build up yeah. a, an, ex, an expectation, which I sort of think I might have got on that. Um, but I'm still not 100% with the all of the images um, on that. But I do like the layout of it. And I think the music is a really important factor for all of it um and as i say i think it's the hardest thing uh, one of the things i'll probably be exploring which i've not done yet is voiceover mm -hmm. um, because yeah. obviously with google voice search coming in um, which then gets optimized then that could actually be quite beneficial for video creators it's a good thought right. i think um, you have to find the voice that suits what you're doing as well. At the moment, there was only a choice of three UK voices <coughs> in NVIDIA, but I do believe they will be committed to do more. Um, of course, you can go and create it in uh, uh, various different products like Amazon's product um, and then import it. So, you know, or you can live -o do it yourself within NVIDIA. Oh, you can do that in NVIDIA, can you? You can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can speak over the slide. Um, and um, I used to use another product that's very similar, um, but you can only use what words you put on the screen in the voiceover. With NVIDIA, you type the words and they're separate totally from the words on the screen, which is great because um, I showed a video last week with some technical bits in it, um, and I was only able to put like three words in the across the bottom of the slide but actually use two whole sentences to describe what it was but if you have the, the, the sound turned off which we know a lot of people view videos with the sound turned off you could still get the gist of what yeah. that slide was about but in NVIDIA you you type it separately the only thing I don't like is you can't go back and change it okay oh, okay. if you if you make an error in it, suddenly you have to re-input it. So I started typing them in Word first <laughs> and then copying and pasting them into NVIDIA when I'm doing the voiceover stuff. So just a little thing there. Um, then I can always go back to Word, make change or make sure I've made it right in Word um, and uh, repaste it. Right. But it's actually very, very easy to do. Mm. And... Um, it's a simple single click above the, the scene timeline. Enter it, listen to it, don't like it, go back and change it. You can even change the person speaking on the fly. Um, I'm using Amy uh, from the three that are available. There's Brian, but it sounds like a drip to me, so <laughs> I've chosen not to use Brian. <laughs> um, it's much easier than you expect. And you can just sit there press the go button say what you want press the stop button and add that to the slide right one click you. well three clicks sorry stop start and add to the slide yeah. so that's really easy to do kevin well worth the play with yeah i think i'll have a play with it i've never been a big fan of the pre-done voices 
They don't right. sound like Daleks anymore, Kevin. But I know. <laughs> no. Right. Now, you've always been uh, heavily involved in video, live video, and using video to promote your business. Why, is, why do you think video is important now, Kevin? Uh, the, the problem is, is that you, you've got to do more to stand out. You've got to do more that is quick, fast, informative. And everyone's seen the social graphic updates, the quotes and all of that stuff. And some of them are okay. Some of them are not so okay. Um, but video sort of takes it to the next level. So it takes you to, you know, it's a bit like Facebook stories. It's just a very small snippet of something. And the videos, the, these types of promotional videos, are only like 30, 40, 50 seconds long. They're not long but they can convey quite a lot of information mm -hmm. rather than always having to go and read through, for example, a sales page. It will give someone an idea of to whether they want to find out a bit more. All right. So, and, so yeah. And I, I think now people, and specifically now, people have big data plans on their mobiles, and that was always one of the problems. Yeah, um, They'll watch them on the fly. Whereas before, if you go back three or four years when we used doing video and people had limited data plans, they wouldn't watch them because they didn't want to use that data up. Yeah, that's true. And we know. So it's convenient. Brilliant. Right. I've, okay. I've been Perfect. using the voiceover stuff to create show videos for exhibitions. So we're taking a 32 inch telly, not me, but my clients taking a 32 inch telly putting it on the stand. There's only two of them on the stand and they're using that to keep people on the stand when they're not able to talk to them. Um, and we've been using in video to create videos about products um, and use those really to grab people to either come onto the stand or to stay on the stand when they're not able to catch hold of them. Uh, right. And it works sure. well. <laughs> If you're watching live and want more information, please type in video in the comments and we'll get back to you after the show. And it's time to move on to Kevin's second video of the day. So I'm going to bring the video on the screen. We'll get used to the routine in a minute. We'll get the video on the screen. I am going to switch John's camera off first this time. You'll still be able to hear him and you'll still be able to hear me and put Kevin bottom left hand corner, adjust the volume and press play. Here we go. I've got to say, uh, Kevin, that uh, I bring us back on screen and John as well. I absolutely love that video. One, the music is fantastic. Good choice. Great choice. And the second thing is that because you said at the beginning, there are seven items to look at. You prepared for that and you actually want to know, after you've seen the first two, you want to know what three, four, five, six, and seven are. So... <laughs> For me, it worked. For me, it worked totally. Now, um, John, your your thoughts. Um, I'm going to ask Kevin a question first. Was yes, this John. an imported listicle? No. Um, and the reason for that is because I find I have to cut so much out. So this is from quite an in-depth blog post. So it's probably 2,000 words. Mm -hmm. um, and on that video combined probably a hundred words. Yeah. 
So I, I went through, it was far quicker for me to copy paste, copy paste the bits that I wanted and put straight in. But um, you did use a listicle style template for this. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and from my point of view, because this is obviously promoting our blog post, this is great because it gives you a bit of the story. Mm -hmm. It gives you sort of the headline of it, of each of the seven points, enough to go, actually, I might want to read a bit more. Actually, what does he mean by that? And then they'll go off to the blog and have a read of the full post. Rather than going on social media and going, look, I've just done a nice blog post. Here you go, share. There's the link, which most people nowadays tend to overlook. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a bit punchy where it goes, well, here's seven. I'm going to give you the seven headlines. If you're interested enough, then you can click through and you can read the whole thing. <coughs> Are you pasting this, pasting, posting this um, on Facebook? Uh, this will go onto our Facebook page and onto Pinterest because Pinterest right. do video um, and gets a huge amount of search traffic. John's not said what he thinks of it yet. Yeah. What do I think of it? <laughs> um, I think it's great. Uh, um, the music's a bit brash for me. I, yeah. I've stopped do, using the brash stuff so much these days. I think it's um, called angry. <laughs> yes, yes, brash, angry, whatever you like. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's probably because my main customers for video, brash doesn't really work for pots and pans. Yeah. yeah, yeah and then yeah. my biggest customer sells pots, pans, and all the associated kitchen stuff. Yeah. But the thing is, your blogging audience, Kevin, is from 20 through to 80 or even 90. So you're actually reaching out to the people who are into this music in the 60s and 70s and to the younger generation who, who are of the, the, the you know it's, it hits the spot as it were so you're yeah. going to have a hip-hop version to go with it as well are you kev <laughs> i'm not sure about that uh, we'll, we'll see <laughs> yeah. well, i've anyway. actually got a single video with five different pieces of music that we've been trying out to see which one works best. Okay. They all come out the same at the moment. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, this this is definitely not music to do yoga to. I can I can see that. But in no. terms of actually getting an impact, I, I, I love the music. Um, was it a track you imported or a track that was already there? Oh, all of the audio is in, in video. Brilliant. Um, yeah. it, it, I, I like the track. I think it's good. Um, the majority of our audience, I would say, are if between 40 and 60. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the people that we tend to work with more. Um, so, therefore, they'll get good feelings around that music because it will take them back to the 80s rock stuff and that type of feel. That's right. I mean, I, you, know? you get pumped up. If, if the music <laughs> is right, then you're in. You're in. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, also with this stuff, it's partly – our branding you know we're not lackadaisical lay back go to sleep type of people you know we hopefully create some excitement around what we do in our business and put that into what we train our clients to do yeah so you know it sort of reflects us a bit as well which is important as you know totally because you are your brand yeah. you've got it you've got to have right okay do you have any plans to use any of these um on twitter uh, good question. Um, I don't know is the honest answer. Thank you. Because with Twitter, it's only 720p and uh, you have to uh, you have to make sure it's under 25 meg. But I've been having quite a bit of success with NVIDIA videos on Twitter. Twitter's an interesting one. It was such an interesting platform for me because we neglect it and we've neglected it for years we have an auto feed go through it, yet it's one of our biggest traffic referrers back to our sites as a social platform. Mm -hmm. Yet we neglect it completely. Um, yeah. And I can't work that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it definitely works for, for some of my clients. Yeah. Not all of them, but for some of them. Okay. Mm. What I am finding interested on there is um, the Periscope Twitter connection. Mm -hmm. 
which works well for us. So when I go live on, um, when I go live, I go to Facebook and Periscope, and then Periscope automatically puts it through into Twitter. So and that works incredibly well. There's a thought. Yeah. Are you still a big user of Periscope? Well, I, I've gone back to it because, um, and it's only really been in the last seven days. Uh, because it was a dormant account. I had 900 people connected on Periscope because I'd left it for a year and a half or almost two years. And I picked it up. And from day one, I went back on there last week. I've started gaining new followers and interaction again. And they're coming over into the Blogging Challenge group and, and taking action. And I've always found Periscope, because Periscope is purely live video. That's all they do on there. They don't do anything else. So people expect to watch live shows. Um, and because of that, they want to interact. So they want to do something. And therefore, I've always found it's really, really good for getting people from Periscope to do something. Facebook's a bit different because people come onto Facebook for so many different reasons. It's, n very, it's not just live video on Facebook. Yeah. And the same will be for LinkedIn. It's not live video on LinkedIn. Uh, but Periscope, because of the nature of the platform, that's all they do on there. You, you find the interaction is very different. Right. Would you like to introduce? <laughs> right. Sorry, okay. Well, that's... Our audience has increased by one. Yes, sure. Just a... we, can, we can. Yeah. Off you go. Okay. Back to uh, to John and I for a moment while Kevin uh, wrestles or wrestles the dog. Um, I, yeah. It's good this week because although we had. Um, the, the videos last week, which I was really grateful for the guy to send us. Take yeah. This week, we can ask, you know, that, the yeah. questions about why have you done that? Where are you targeting it? And I think yeah. that's really, really useful. It, it gives other an extra dimension learn. as we welcome Kevin back. Have you got yeah. the dog under control now, Kevin? Yeah, we're, we're, where our office is, it overlooks a green where everybody walks their dog, and we've got a very... Um, enthusiastic German Shepherd that's only 18 months old. Right. And therefore, she wants to seize the dogs and wants to go and play. And because she can't get there, she wants to talk to them. So, <laughs> brilliant. And she's quite loud. And we're joined by Kelly. And Kelly is saying, uh, the time I was looking at the visual, I couldn't read fast enough. Can you slow it down a bit? Guess you would have to make the video longer. Right. Okay. So, that was was that the first or the second video, Kevin? Kelly. <clears throat> right. Okay. But I mean, it, it basically the, the thing that we can do uh, within video is that it will keep different generations. Yeah. So I mean, I love the the first take. I have no problem with that. But then you can actually take it. You can do variations on it. You can do a whole sorts of things. And uh, Kelly is saying, ah. Oh, he reads slow though i think one of the, the things anyway before we get into the, the nitty-gritty of it shall we have another video courtesy of kevin why not why not so let's bring the video up and you've got the hang of this now i'll turn off my camera first turn off john's camera put you picture in picture and turn the volume slightly down and let's go for it. going to bring you back now Kevin uh, so that your camera is back on and myself and John okay right now I, I want to know more about Pact well Pact um, I dreamt up yesterday morning uh, ah. while I was playing with a dog in the garden uh -huh. um, and I'm actually going to be trademarking that um, so the Pact methodology so this is a uh, 
basically something that we do as business. Yeah, so from the very beginning, the preparation all the way through to the transaction. Um, and there's the four stages as I've seen it in since I've been doing all of this mm, yeah. that people need to go through. Um, and then, of course, it delves into quite into some depth into each section of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so it's, it's a new thing. It's going to be one of our signature things that we talk about within our business, within what we do, it will probably be kept for either one-to-one -one clients or mastermind groups mm -hmm. rather than anything else um, because of the depths of what we go through in there uh, will be quite um, interesting. So, yeah, that's that's what PACT is all about. So, PACT, uh, so yeah, preparation, mm -hmm. attraction, uh, connection, transaction. And and that's not just online. No, that's no, offline as well. Yeah, real world meetings. Uh -huh. yeah. John, um, I see we've got another brand here, the Business Success Dojo. That was in the previous one. Are you finding having multiple brands and representing them graphically a boat? Um, God, I can't get my words out today. I had a struggle with the word this morning as well. Um, a benefit to your business yes um, and the reason why, um, it keeps it really straightforward as to what we're doing so we've we've got three brands so we've got the online visibility academy which is our overarching that's our training mm -hmm. center that's where all of our products are put that's that then we've got the business success dojo which is more generalized in a way but it focuses on business issues um, sales training marketing that type of thing and then we've got Content Nitro, which is very content-based. So email sequences, uh, sales funnels, um, blog writing, that type of thing, copywriting. So we keep that side of things very separate to the dojo side. And whichever way customers come in, dependent on what they're looking for, then they get put up into the top part, which is the Visibility Academy, which is where they look to buy. And that keeps it really straightforward. Mm. So this the video we just watched. How did you create that one mechanically? Um, how did I create that one um, yeah, in, in video? What well, it's not all, a scripted video, all, is it? No, uh, all done via templates that are already in there. I've not adapted the templates at all. Um, some of them I've had to add extra scenes into. So the listicle one I took off of. I, I think actually that might have been um, the yoga one. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, uh, but there was five in there, and I had seven, so I've had to add some extra scenes into it. <clears throat> but um, and on this one and the next one, which I know what the next one is going to be now, I had to actually shorten the scenes because right. they were too long. But all of them were just taken out of the template library that Invideo supplied for free uh, as part of our membership. Mm -hmm. uh, the same oh. with um, the audio, all used from Invideo, and I'd say 90% of the graphics were used from in video as well. Yeah. Um, there's a couple, obviously the logos and stuff aren't. Um, and there's a couple of shots that I think maybe out of the whole lot, maybe three images that I imported. Um, and one on the next one, you'll see one of them for sure. Right. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, that one took me, I'd say under 15 minutes to create. It's the speed, so, isn't it? The ease. Not fast, not slow at all. No. no. Are you doing these just for yourself or do you plan to do them for your clients as well? Um, that's good a really good question. question. Um, at the moment, we're just doing it for ourselves. Um, whether that will change in the future or not, I don't know. Um, I think... I think it will benefit most business people to have some form of video bank of these for different things uh, you mentioned exhibitions which sounds like a great idea you know if you're there and you want something moving on the stand rather than just the people but something to just keep people engaged yeah. uh, that's really good um, i think if you've got product based businesses they're really good um, but also with service-based businesses they're harder to represent because you've got to sort of Sometimes you have to depict feelings of how people feel when they work with you. 
what how do you go so for example if you're a therapist for example how do you depict in a video someone that's unhappy or stressed or you know any of that to the point of jumping up a job without looking cheesy and you know how do you depict that in a video so some of them you'd have to get more thought into but i think all of them have a place where they'll support anybody doing anything and of course you've also got at the moment all of mine are just putting out into normal social media and onto the website but of course you've got the ability to put all of these into ads so you could create video ad funnels for things so taking them down different journeys and what they've watched and how much they've watched would show the next video ad which could all be done in video and i know that they've got in the sidebar now they've got different they've got the insta videos they've got the facebook videos um, they've got another one i can't remember what the other one is um there's another one as well there's about three or four of them um for the formats so i think the possibility there is is quite big I think one of the things that I've learned is that sometimes I do one from a template and I can't put it in all the places I want to. So if I think I'm going to use it in multiple places, I will do that from scratch because I can then say, OK, this is a 10 by uh, this is a 16 by 10. Yeah, 16 by 9. Sorry. Letterbox. Let's make a square out of it, and all I've got to do is uh, re, re is uh, duplicate it, change the format, and then move things around to fit the available space. So I am finding that if I know I want to put this into Instagram, I want to put it onto Facebook, I want to put it onto Twitter and other places, that starting from scratch actually can have its benefits. Because I can do it once and then amend it to fit the other formats. Mm. I think it takes time. Um, you know, I got this when it first came out in video, and it took me probably three or four weeks to really understand the editor. Yeah. It, to me, and I'm used to using things like Camtasia. I've used lots of video editing stuff before. Um, it wasn't quite as intuitive as I thought it would be. So you have to work your own way, even resizing fonts and stuff like that and working out the difference between the brand, the custom and all of that. It takes a little while just to get around it, to know what buttons you've got to press to make what happen. And quite a few times I've, when I was starting on this, I was moving images and they were going in the wrong place. And then I put one on top of the other and I'm used to using layers in Adobe and all of that. Yeah. But it took me a little while to get my head into when I want it to do a certain thing, what do I have to press to make that happen? Uh, but once you get it, you go, oh, that's so simple. Yes. You know, <laughs> I've had that uh, cool. I've had that feeling a number of times. Like, why didn't I think of doing that? Yeah? Because yeah. it is easy once you actually understand it. Yeah, um, but got there's loads it. of help around. Loads and loads oh, yeah. of help around. But when you come in, you've got everything. Mm. and that sometimes can feel a little bit daunting which is why i've not i started off when i very first came in i started off with trying to make them from scratch and it turned into a complete nightmare um and i thought well i'll go down the template route and adapting the templates until i'm really comfortable with the editor and the layers and how all of that bit works and using all the custom stuff on the side once and i'm sort of there now then I, I would go on to creating from scratch. And I, I think that's probably if you want to not spend a hundred hours trying to make something and it still look rubbish, is probably a good way of doing it. If you're new to this type of thing. I, I, I'm using both ways. Um, one of the things I plan to do next week is to take a template, um, not an NVIDIA one, but one created by a third party, but that's free. Show you that show you changes to the text and then show you it with changes to the video that sits behind it and the music so you can see a bit of a progression from starting with somebody else's work and turning it into your work yeah, yeah. and just to yeah, sorry Kevin. sorry 
Yeah. Stephen? It's okay. If you're not watching the Be Live in Five page, you'll find the link up above. You can join us uh, where we're live. You can comment and we can feature your comments on the screen, just like we can feature Kelly's comments on the screen. So wherever you're watching from, if you click the link up above, then you can join us. Now, this is a weekly show, and this is the call out to everybody who's watching this show on the replay. Thank you. Um, if, like Kevin, you have videos that you want to be given a wider audience, then just contact us, John or myself, in the in video support group or on Messenger, and we can take it to the next step. As John said, we'll be featuring John's videos next week, but if you want to be featured as well, just let us know. Yeah, that, there's three nine second videos I've done. <laughs> That's <laughs> 27 seconds of the show. Of the show. <laughs> 27 seconds of the show but i think the, 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 it's the concept there that's important john you actually go from somebody else's work modify it slightly and then come up with the, the final working version for the client because you're running an agency and you're working for clients um kevin sounds like he's going to be doing both because once people start to see these videos the first questions that are going to come up is how did you do that kevin and uh talking of that we'll bring up the next video and uh last but not least yeah ask the question after the video how did you do that kevin so i'm going to switch uh let's get this right in sequence my camera off john's camera off i'm going to put it picture in picture uh probably the way around kevin sorry about that right <laughs> okay uh adjust the volume and press play It's not that one, Kev. Sorry, just a minute. I've gone wrong somewhere. <laughs> this is live video. It's not that one. I'm going to take that one down. Just a minute. Just let me. I'll find it somewhere. That should be it. Ah. is that the one yes that's the one right if you give me a second and i'll just uh, take that off being full screen and if you just chat for a moment what i'm going to do <laughs> is <laughs> is i'm going to refresh and i'll be back in a second okay. so that's the two of you on screen hopefully we're, just, nah, we're still there hang on a minute now we're blank Oh, just a minute. That's one. Hello. That's two. No. No, still only me. Ah, uh, <coughs> uh, this is live video, and uh, now hopefully I've got the video's back. The video's back. Well, I'm going to. Right. I, I'm going to refresh, uh, and if you want to talk about a video for a moment, I'll be back. Well, I, I saw the lovely Sarah featured in that. Oh yes. I um I first met Sarah in a car park when we had that big do in Reading. Oh really? I don't remember how long ago it was. But this <laughs> this this lady bounced up to me, thumped me on the shoulder, and said, "I know you. You're John Upton." Yeah. <laughs> and that was going back to the old Academy days. It was an oh, Academy so. meeting arranged by um Andrew. Andrew, yes, Wilcox. Yeah. In a sports centre. Gosh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was there too. Yeah, and um, God, Robert, I can't pronounce his surname, Zarawacki or however you Zara, pronounce Robert, it. Robert Zarovich. Zarovich, I told yeah, you yeah. Zarawacki. Um, he, uh, he, he came up all the way from uh, De Devon, Devon, didn't he, from Ilfracombe. And he dressed like James Bond, he was, because he's got a bow tie and a white dinner jacket on. And the rest right. of us were in our jeans and things. Yeah. Those were the good old days. Oh, yes. Indeed. We're ready to go again. So I I'm going to switch, switch John's camera off. That works. Switch me off, Stephen, if it's easier. Go picture in picture. I'm going to switch Kevin off so that 
we've got the video on screen and I am going. Is that the right one? Well, Kev, we've got. seen it all the way through this time. Are you there, Kev? Yeah, I'm here. You look a bit different in the photo. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Nothing. nothing. So you look more mature we, we, today. <laughs> <laughs> that, that photo was only done um, two years ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the camera likes me. Just not the live camera. <laughs> So that's um, so that video is the intro to my lives that I do on our Facebook page. Uh, so I'm using that as an intro and outro, um, and it's it's quite interesting because I shortened that down quite a lot because it was a 30 second template, mm -hmm. and I've shortened it down to 20 seconds, I believe it is. Um, but the second slide to me, just watching that now, looks a little bit too long. I need to shorten it down a little bit more, I think. Um, looking in some of the live stream groups, they're saying up to 20 seconds for an intro video is sort of the max. So I'm probably at the top end of that on that. It's not quite punchy uh, enough. I, I did um, one for um, an organisation um, and it was superb. It's falling over here like dominoes, the logo moving around. Um, and it was about 31 seconds long. And he said to me, are we ever going to get to my product? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to, it's got to be sharp, Snappy. You've got to hit the point. And it, it, I like it. I like it. I mean, the other one, three, I love. This I like. So it's all positive. Um, but uh, we're coming up towards the uh, the end of the show, Kevin. So the floor is yours. Do you, well, I've thrown you in at the deep end here. You knew I would <laughs> at some point during the show. Uh, to give you your thoughts about NVIDIA. My thoughts about NVIDIA. Um, yeah. I think like all of these platforms that come out in the way that these come out, um, it's not quite perfect, but they're developing at a rate of knots. I think the support is absolutely awesome. And I think if you're looking, and you should be looking really, if you've got a business, you're in business, to create some form of video doesn't need to be a sales video but any form of awareness video then i think it's a, a really good place to start because you don't actually need anything else and a lot of video platforms you've got to either go off and find images or you've got to go off and find music but this one has all of that there for you and although it might not be your exact choice it's still as you can see from what i've put out hopefully today um, you can produce something that's pretty reasonable so I, I think it's great, and I just look forward to them constantly doing the updates that they're doing. Well, I think with with the team that they've actually got behind them, uh, who seem to be there twenty four seven, um, working away. Um, we the, the the thing is that we're actually there's a Udemy course that's already out, a very good one, a free one, and I'm doing a Udemy course too. But the problem with doing a Udemy course about Nvidia is that things keep changing. So no sooner have you shot the front screen than a week later it changes. Um, so trying to keep up with everything that's going on. But I think that, as you say, they've got a, a committed team and they do listen to what we say. And the NVIDIA group is invaluable. John, as we come towards the end of the show, we've got a tradition. It's over to Mr. Upton to actually um, close us out. Yes. As I think many of you know, Stephen and I have a morning show today so that goes out 10 o'clock uk time as opposed to four o'clock here some are god on earth during the time like five in the morning if you're in the states is, yeah. we still get a number of people from the states and canada join us live though oh, um, yeah. just like to mention that whilst this was our fourth one of these next thursday morning if you're around will be our 200th weekly show Yes, makes us both feel old, but we're <laughs> veterans of live streaming. So next week's our 200th show in the morning. 
and our fifth show in the afternoon of oh, Inspired by NVIDIA. I don't know what happened there. My brain fell off. I'm, 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 I'm going to put that up on, on the screen so that we can go out with it as a close. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I'm just glad that most of the videos worked. Um, this is inspired by video. Kevin, we're indebted. Thank you for joining us today. Really enjoyed the videos and the insights into how they were made. It's back to John to close. Thanks for having me. So, traditionally, I've closed all 200 of those programs and I'm going to close the fourth one of these. So, it's goodbye from our guest in Essex. You're still in Essex, aren't you, Kevin? I, am. I know you've moved. Goodbye from Stephen in Wiltshire, near the world renowned, um, what are they called? Them funny stones? You love Stonehenge, saying that, you? Stonehenge, John. Stonehenge, that's the word. And I'm in the middle of the country um, in a place called Soli Hull. So it's goodbye from all three of us. Thank you for watching. Same time, same place next week. Bye. Bye.